Hey peeps and everyone at our channel. So it's time for another growing up in rock and roll story time. This will also go in the uh, AP files playlist. Uh, <laughs> oh boy, I have been, <laughs> I have spent the last couple days trying to figure out how to do this one and I'm still not sure. Um, but it's one of those ones that there's been kind of some of the most unanswered questions on when it comes to me and AP. And because the songs that came out of this story were so amazing, groundbreaking at the time, innovative, new, um, you know, kind of pushing the limits on, on what you can do with music that it's worth discussing for the music lesson alone. And, and, I, and I'll try to keep going back to that because when you guys find out what it's about. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, like, I, I'm a pretty good person, but, um, I had to get a little teeny bit baked in order to even discuss this topic. I figure uh, this is one I'll have to laugh my way through. It is funny. It is funny. It's kind of adorable. Um, so you know how in Mean Girls, and you know me and AP may have been some of the inspiration behind some of that movie and some of those classic Regina George and Katie Heron moments, um, not all of them, you know, a few of them. Um, you know that scene in the movie where Regina comes home and her little sister is dancing to Milkshake and it just looks like this seriously inappropriate moment where you're really questioning what the parents are allowing the kids to get away with and what the kids are being exposed to and how that is coming out in their behavior. This is one of those stories where we were probably far too young. Um, so how this happened, it's just that me and AP always went big and never had any regrets. <coughs> so we are going to discuss... Um, uh, 16 volts, uh, Filthy Love of Fire off of their Wisdom, their 1993 Wisdom album, and uh, Five Finger D Punches cover of Mama Said Knock You Out. Um, and the touching story that goes behind this of Young Love. Um, I will link these songs reluctantly in the playlist. They are stellar musically. Um, absolutely 100% proud of these songs. Um, and like I said, you know, I may have been the projector room girl and I might still say to this day that I have no regrets and would probably have done it all over again if I was given the choice again. So you got to keep in mind we were those kind of kids even though I, I was, as I'm telling some of these wild stories, I want you guys to know I was still a good kid. I was still doing good in school, um, you know. Um, for the times, we were fairly good kids. It was just way too wild and way too much was allowed. Um, so 93 rolls around and um, 16 Volts Wisdom album comes out. I'm probably only a sophomore or junior. I want to say sophomore. Um, and this becomes my new favorite album. This is the best thing I have ever heard in my life musically and um you know then it gets to their love ballad filthy love of fire um that's the best way to describe it is it's an industrial hard rock love ballad it's a little bit slower 
it's um, it has a certain mood to it and you kind of get the gist of of the innuendo or connotations behind how the song uh, what the song musically conveys um, that 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 um, and 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 that one's a deep one. That one's a deep one that, like, I'm not even going to go fully into on that one. But needless to say, I'm super excited for it coming out. <laughs> and this is, you know, around the time I'm planning to, like, I have this plan that when I turn 18, I'm going to get my tongue pierced. Um scenes at the time in the punk scene and goth scene and rock scene were all the rage. Kids were getting piercings and tattoos left and right. There was a kid in one of my high school classes that already had a tattoo. Like sometimes parents would let their kids and like sign the permission form for it at the tattoo shop. Um, I was gonna have to wait till I turned 18 to get this tongue piercing. And the reason I wanted this tongue piercing was because I saw a punk rocker that had some really cool piercings that I just kind of fell in love with when I was young. And um, that was one that I thought, okay, that's not going to be like right out there on my face like a nose piercing or not. like I can kind of sort of hide it. Um, but at the same time, it's still rock and roll, you know, for, for my image, um, you know, um, cause I, cause I was kind of that, that leather jacket or flannel wearing kid, um, teenager. So, um, when Filthy Love of Fire comes out, it's all the questions because we're still in high school. We're still young and, um, you know, what's up with the song and this girl's tongue piercing. <laughs> uh, yikes, yikes. And then, and then years later, we end up performing a song and I think we performed it down right on O'Brien Square, literally on Park Avenue, me and AP, and like someone, they got to bring down the guitars to do the Five Finger D Punch version of the song. Now this version doesn't come out till 2013, but somehow back in the day, we were performing it in, in the club, you know, out there. Um, and we had someone playing the guitar parts, like, late at night down down on Park Avenue on O'Brien Square in Portland and we even had people who had memorized all of the lyrics and it's the same lyrics that appear in this version of the cover as opposed to the original now the original was already a beloved song of ours that that we performed as kids it was one of our favorite rap songs to do growing up and us kids would have known it pretty well um, and, and, and probably had done it, um, already. And, um, and I, and I remember being out on the, oh no, I remember being out on the sidewalk performing this with AP and some dudes with guitars and some other assorted people in the middle of the night. And I even remember part of the vocal arrangement where at one point our group was going to break off into two sections and one people were going to keep the, the five finger D punch version of the lyrics and some of us were going to change the the line where it says past your soul to astro zone and the reason we were going to do this was because at the time AP had this this young genius business idea of starting um, a place kind of like a fantasy factory um, that, that was it on VH1 um, something like that where kids could have in Portland to, to go and have fun and get that, that energy out in a safe way where, you know, if, if you need to jump into a pile of foam, you can, 
or or you can you know rent the place out and practice your stunt work on a bike you know in a pile of foam too or you could have fun laser nights with laser light nights with rock and roll music um at a place like that and 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 you know have like a teen party there cool teen party where where kids could just you know play in the gym and on all the equipment and and have like rock music and a laser light show and a cake um so so he's sitting here and we're sitting outside you know sitting down by o'brien square late at night and and you know we're flirting with each other and talking about these these business plans and like these ideas we have like his idea to to open the secret nightclub that used to be above the roxy um one day you know we'd sit late at night um having our quality time together and and sometimes these were the sorts of deep things we discussed while we were flirting with each other so when I was looking up the lyrics to the research for this video, this uh, I still have unanswered questions about all of this, about, about these two songs, um, which makes this a little difficult because the song didn't come out according to the internet. It didn't come out till 2013, but we would have been performing it like back in the 90s, like after Filthy Love of Fire came out, which people thought was you know, kind of my love ballad. Um, and, and you got to remember back, you know, I didn't answer stuff back then. People would come up and ask me things like, oh, you have a tongue piercing. Care to explain filthy love of fire? Um, no, <laughs> no, I do not. <laughs> um, and I think because we were so young, that, that was stuff that I just kind of stayed quiet on, um, whether or not I may have had any input um, on <laughs> long ago. Um, really proud of that song, by the way. Really just proud of how the music composition came out. That song is beautiful. Um, if you need that really sexy date night song, <laughs> there it is. There it is. Um, and I think at the time um, there was the joke made of one day you'll thank me for <laughs> one day you'll thank me for this. Um, sometimes doing stuff like that that could be really fun but um you know we were pretty unapologetic just open and honest kids like you know me and ap flirted in every performance we ever did unless we were dance battling our, our aggression out so what these two songs kind of represent is um we're both working on separate things at the time we're not always having time to spend together and these are kind of like the 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 angry s frustration type songs i can't say the actual word um back and forth to each other like hey i'm over here working on this project but i love you and miss you i can't wait to see you again next time we get together um and and so when i was doing the research for the song i i went and pulled the lyrics for this version of the cover the original um, and what I found for the one by Five Finger D Punch that, that we used to do back in the day was um, two different sets of lyrics. So the line where, where it says tour in the original, but now I got a new tour, um, I think is how it's worded in one of those versions. Um, I found a different set of lyrics under the Apple iTunes lyrics than I found on the internet and that was toy instead of tour which would make more sense to me because me and ap had this this inside joke that i'm trying to keep pg right now um <laughs> oh my gosh i can't believe i'm doing these stories uh, <laughs> And uh, this was a song that we would use to flirt. Well, both of these songs were songs that we used to flirt back and forth with, essentially. Like, how adorable for, 
<laughs> How adorable. Young people that, that love each other can't always be together. They send in these kind of songs back and forth, and sometimes they have a bit of an angry feel, but it's still a like, next time we get together, um, or can't wait to see you again sort of thing. Um, so... <laughs> Ah, so we actually did the arrangement where, where sometimes we would use the original lyrics that, that you see with, with the five finger deep punch version. And other times we did a version where we would change some of the lyrics for a performance. And I don't know how we got guitars down at O'Brien Square in the middle of the night also like, um, and I, I can't remember even who did did the guitars for those performances or why those performances but we did them on park avenue like ap park avenue ha 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 um i think he insisted on that as the location um and interestingly there is a a building uh named yost goob or groob there also right on that block and that would be right across the street from the block where Jesse passed away. Um, and I still can't remember if when we did those performances at O'Brien Square, if it was before or after Jesse, though. Like, I haven't remembered that part yet. Was it before or after? Anyhow, um... So me and AP would, I think, put these songs out <laughs> back and forth like this and then have these epic nights where we got together and, and would just run off and ditch out on everyone and just go off together. Um, and, and, you know, the next day or a couple days later, you know, when we show back up, like, where have you two been, like, did you guys go have fun again? Um, and, and the thing is, me and AP, I think, have been doing this since we were young. Like, like I think I knew him, like, way back when I was real little, like, grade school, like, like five, six, seven years old at least, um, I think is where one of my earliest memories go back to. Um, now the other cover I want to talk about with this band is, um, their House of the Rising Sun cover, their beautiful, beautiful, beautiful House of the Rising Sun cover, which is still top of my list on best covers of all time. Um, this band is known for their musical perfection. These guys don't make mistakes. Um, their volume leveling is superb. Um, they play everything really clean and, and, um, the sound quality is just spectacular with this band, which is why I love them so much. And these two covers are just so special to me. Um, and I told the story about why that song is special to me that, that I played that for my guitar final. Um, for the college class that I, that I was, when I was in the college, um, music program, the same music program Kenny G was in, um, at the age of 16, cause I was trying to Doogie Howser my way to a better life earlier. Um, maybe if I overachieve enough, uh, I can get out of my house that I feel unsafe in. Um, so House of the Rising Sun is a really special song to me because um, this would have been back when when me and AP were playing this stuff on our turntables, you know. Um, and so getting to do that for our guitar, guitar final, like, you know, such, such a great song to choose, um, especially for beginners like um but the version that, that Five Finger D-Punch plays is a lot more complicated. Um, and you listen to that cover and the first thing you think is, I'm no musician at all compared to these guys who are just amazing. Like this is, this is a band that will give even the best musicians insecurities about their own musical skills is, is how good they are. 
Um, so, so if that's any testament to how much I, I love them, um, it, it's, it's big, big love, um, when it comes to how awesome their music is. So if AP ever got the chance to work, work with them, how cool is that? How cool is that? I, I probably would have chickened out and felt inferior musically to even approach a project like that that would have been way too intimidating for me um but I think he was a lot more advanced in the arts than most of us were at that age um you know there were some things we could perform in the club and some kids you know had had a repertoire of you know a few songs that they knew and they could perform on the fly if needed and and what songs each kid knew might differ and certain kids might have certain songs you know multiple songs they could do together at the club um it just depends um but um You know, I think I think when we when we worked on on Material Girl for Cam FDM, that had been the most complicated thing that I had ever done that we had ever done musically as kids at that point. Um, Sasha was just such a cool mentor. Um, he was just so positive focused, um, focused on you know reminding kids to not do substances. Um, you know, just almost being, being like an uncle, you, you know, like, like, um, you know, making sure, making sure kids, kids had food to eat, um, teaching them music skills, giving them music lessons, saying, hey, I'm going to be in the studio today, you want to come learn, and the vocal effects and material girl was done by, by a whole group of kids in a music lesson with Sasha. Like that was a music lesson. The vocal sound layering and, and effects that they do in that song that are just so, that's just so spectacular. That was the lesson that day. And that's how well these kids learned that lesson was that it ended up being a song in rock and roll history that, that, that you know, ended up, and ended up, ended up being out there. Um, you know, so I, I look back on a lot of those things and there's just so much to be proud of that, that like, wow, we were so young and, and look how talented we were. Uh, it's so sad that some of them aren't here anymore. Um, you know, so rest in peace to Jesse who died down there where we did these performances. Um, when he passed away, it affected the whole city. That there was an outpouring of grief amongst the youth and everyone out there at the time in the scene. Um, that that's how much people love that kid. Um, like I said, I did not know him very well. I had maybe only run into him a few times. Um, like, like the kind of kid that if you ran into him again, you might not even remember that you had met him before. Like, like I did not know much about him except for his stunt work that he did, his skateboarding that he did, um, and helping out with 16 and doing some of the performances at the mall while we were across town at like different venues. Um, so, you know, a kid that I just didn't really get the chance to interact with. Um, a whole lot or get to know um, he was only 14 man he was only 14 that much talent um, and such a young kid wow so the next video we're gonna have to talk about now that you know about me and AP's uh, S frustration songs of love <laughs> that we just sent out there into the rock music world for everyone to hear um, the next thing that the next topic that we're going to do um, is there is an artist that I want to review because I have supported their career. And the reason that I've supported their career goes back to one of the stories of one of these kids that, that I loved a whole lot that isn't here anymore. 
uh, whose story deserves to be told along with AP's because he was just as talented. Uh, AP was, was, like I said, like way more talented than any of us if he was helping out on movies, songs, um, you know, occasional music videos, maybe like, like, like um, I think he was just out there doing any job he could, any, any way to make money um, and get his art out there. You know, whether it was DJing in the club, then training DJs to work, be able to work in multiple venues, you know, getting songs published, um, helping album launches, you know, whatever, whatever. Um, just so talented. And he could sit there and like coach you through like, like, like say you've never done this before. And how intimidating is that when you're a young kid and you've never done this before? And he just always knew, like, like how to do a performance and, like, you know, here's what you do. <laughs> and he would know for every single instrument and part and, like, sound for the performance and lighting. And, like, he just knew every single, had always had every single detail worked out. Like, that's how incredibly talented he was um, and, and how knowledgeable about the arts he was. Um but this other guy we're going to discuss next um, equally is talented, already out there performing in a working band, um, get, you know, getting professional gigs, um, you know, passed away way too young um, and unexpectedly. Um, and this other other artists who we're gonna do some song reviews on just because maybe I don't know if you've heard these songs I don't know if they've gotten quite as much exposure um, as some other artists um, and maybe as an artist worth going back and taking another look at you know um, and the reason is because this artist reminds me of this kid that I knew um, his, his stage presence, his music skills, his singing voice reminds me so much, even the way he looks. Um, and, um, the moment I saw him on TV, I was like, OMG, he reminds me of, like, he's, he sounds just as awesome as, as so-and-so, and, -so. and um, this artist had my support from then on out because my feeling was if people aren't going to be able to hear Tyler's work one day, they might as well, you know, see another artist that, that, that just, you know, seem, seem musically to have some of the same ideas and creative genius so people can get a sense of this kid that, that they'll now never get to meet because he, cause he's gone too young uh, before his career had a chance to take off. Um, for me, it's, it's a way to keep this, this person who's passed close to me when I watch this other artist perform. It's like watching this person for me. Um, so we'll have to go into that story in the next episode. Um, hope this one was entertaining. Uh, uh, I keep finding more and more songs and I don't know how many there are and I don't always know how they came to be, who was behind them getting out. Um, And there's some that I, I knew about and then just hadn't thought about for decades, like these two songs today, where, where you know, um, you know, the Wisdom album, not, not something I'm going to forget easily, um, because that was such a, a special album in my life at that time in my life when I was just starting to learn about this kind of music and really getting into it and all the kids were. Um, and then you find that one artist that just does it so well um, and just represents that genre perfectly because um, they're just nailing it. Um, 
they're doing in the studio what you would do. They're they're making the kind of music that 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 that, that you know that you envision. Um, this is your your music, you know. Um, you know, so the Wisdom album, you know, and I've got other videos up discussing some of the other songs on that album. I left this one off of it because my first thought was, I can't talk about how the song came out when I was just still a teenage. <laughs> like, like we can't have that discussion. Um, that's a bit much. Um, you know, so, so I'm trying to keep it as PG as possible. Um, once again, I want to say I have no regrets. <laughs> um, you know, uh, um, I, I, I think we should be really proud of that album. Um, that album was groundbreaking at the time. And even, even, you know, when we talk about what defines the industrial or electronic or uh, experimental rock genres, um, you know, these guys, these guys, um, for sure, for sure. Um, and talk about what a blessing to grow up getting to learn this music too. Um, you know, sometimes getting to help with some of it. Um, you know, so I hope you guys are enjoying these stories because I realize that that wasn't everybody's experience growing up. That, that like, you know, a whole lot of people out there can't sit and say, you know, how the song on an album about them came to be. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry that a whole city uh, <laughs> and then a whole country and world... Uh, when you factor in touring bands and stuff, uh, got to hear uh, the love saga of me and the AP over years and years. Um, you know, and, and in a lot of ways, those are fond, fond memories, though. Like, could you imagine being, like, what was I thinking as a little girl? Could you imagine being AP and I'm flirting with him all the time? I... I wear my heart on my sleeve with him, like, like, you know, he's the kid that I'll openly profess my love for what, every time I see him. Um, that's how much I care about him. And Filthy Love of Fire comes out with another band. And, like, I can't imagine what that must have done to him and any other boys, um... So for him to come out later, you know, if he helped on, if he helped it all on, on Mama Said Knock You Out, and it just wasn't released till years later, um, but we were still out there performing it. Um, how, how kind of sweet and adorable is that? Um, that, that, um, you know, um kind of uh, uh, things were deep between us growing up um, a lot of these kids had really really strong bonds like that um, and a lot of times what made your relationship with someone special wasn't even something you could talk about with other people and other people are just kind of left wondering. I think that was the case with, with me and AP. Um, I maybe even more than that, um, was, was that, that like, um, you know, we were so young, so I wasn't going to discuss it with people. Um, I'm not going to get into a conversation with a fan on a street corner about song lyrics. I'm sorry. Um, you know, um, but all of us kids at the same time having our inside jokes back and forth at each other. So, so if, if, if the line in the Apple Music lyric version of New Toy instead of New Tour 
uh, I mean, that's how we performed it. That's how we performed it. So, um, you, you know, that, 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 that was an inside joke between me and AP um, that sometimes other people might have overheard and, and um, you know, um, that we were just very, very kind of raw and honest back then with like two people liked each other you know and maybe they can't be together all the time and when they're not together they're seeing other people um and sometimes they go visit each other's schools and and everyone else is watching this go down and like you know what what is this like you know they seem to love each other dearly but why are they, you know, off with other people doing other projects and stuff? Um, you know, and then these songs are coming out back and forth, um, you know, and making people wonder and speculate even more. Um, uh, and I think there were times we probably got those kind of questions and just didn't maybe didn't always answer them or give like a catty response like, like we, I think we just decided to let it be a mystery that, that, that like we just weren't gonna go there with people and, and if they pushed us too hard, we just deepen the mystery with more mind boggling stuff that, that'll be unresolved questions about lyrics or fandom stuff later. Um, but um, he, he was such a fun kid. We, we uh, I mean, there, and here's the thing, there would be times people just show up and find us cuddling somewhere, whether it was in a DJ booth or at a bookstore, <laughs> or, you know, or at a club, like, 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 you know, even on a street corner, even maybe on the street, like, uh, in a park, um, people would just show up and find me and AP in 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 these situations over and over and over and over and over again um where have you guys been for the last two or three days i see you're at the park late at night what have you two been up to anybody want to answer some filthy love of fire questions and then they report back to their friends. Yeah, I think they're creamy thighs and over there again. And and it just kind of became so many running jokes uh, among or just across the whole city in regards to this this situation. <laughs> that like the creamy thighs and joke came out of that. The new toy joke came out of that. The AstroZone joke came out of that. The um, you know, um, all the tongue piercing jokes came out of like, like all the jokes were, were just about people speculating what me and AP were up to. <laughs> um, and I, th I, I think, I think that like, I always just had this mindset that, that, you know, it's nobody's business. You know, you know what I mean? Like, just because you're dating somebody doesn't mean you want to share all the details of that with every single one of your friends across the whole city. And, and you, you, you know, you got the little tidbits that came out in rock music. And, and that better be enough, guys. Um, you know, um, <laughs> what mischievous kids we were, though, putting these songs out back and forth like that. Oh my gosh, what must the adults have been thinking? Um, uh, yeah, so, so yeah, back in the day I had my tongue pierced and, and I kept it for years and years and years. Um, and that had a whole bunch of inside jokes and myths behind too just because in so much of my life I was such a prim and proper because I'm also sometimes um, on champion dance teams that are competing I am also sometimes doing charity work and charity projects um, I have a um, young youth group that I'm involved with where, where we do a lot of outreach and charity 
um, you know, type helping others type things. And so I'm not always this rock and roller kid. And it was like, you have this school life to balance. You have this, this life of trying to like give back and do good in the world part of your life and then this whole other part of your life where all these rock songs are coming out about you and and you have fans and people are speculating and you're getting people coming up to you on the street corner asking you about song lyrics and asking you questions and and you're still even too young to discuss it and, and you're still even too young to even fully understand it um uh, how this got so big um, and I'm sure there were days that I sat and cried, like just over the stress of it all, over over the chaoticness of it all, over over the how do I balance this all. Um, it looks like I was always burning the candle at both ends or or three ends. Like, like I was always burning the candle at three or four ends, but so was AP. So was AP. Like he was had his. DJ was weekly DJ club gig maybe at two or three different clubs then he had five DJs he was training you know another five already working at various clubs around songs that he's trying to to get done and out to bands oh you need us to help on an album launch oh let let us resurrect this venue for you like um when did we sleep you know and and then to think you know how big the partying was on top of of you know already burning the candle at both ends at that level um you know having these these wild club nights and um wild concert nights and um you know um and, and, and going out and having fun like that, you know, went back to having skate nights together as kids, you know, going to the amusement park together as kids, like, like we had been doing it since we were little. Um, and a lot of times it was really fun. I mean, is it, is it worth, I never made any money at it, though. That, that's the only thing is, is I'm sitting here broke and scared for my life and and I never got to make any money at it so so my donation link if you want to donate to help with my medical care will be in the description as always um you know some people made money at it um You know, I didn't. I, it was mostly just, you know, here I am to help with whatever you need. And I think I was just going to follow AP wherever wherever he went in life just because he was doing such big things. And, and, and the stuff he was doing was just so groundbreaking and amazing. Um, some of the most amazing art and shows you've ever seen. Um, things other people aren't thinking about. Um, you know, building this place called the Astro Zone that would be like the fantasy factory. And then like, you know, because we had been kids that spent some of our teens going to laser light shows at OMSI, like Pink Floyd laser light show nights. Who, who remembers that back in the 90s when that trend swept a nation? Um, any, any city that had a planetarium, um, they they did these like like themed rock and roll laser light show nights where you could go watch a laser light show in the auditorium um in the planetarium with like all the stars and planets and stuff um and listen to a whole album and the laser light show would be themed around that album and they did like pink floyd metallica like all sorts of different artists um you know for ap to then years later you know, be like, I want to create this, this fantasy factory place, like, you know, Astro's on, this was before fantasy factory ever came out, you know, we would have still probably been teenagers discussing Astro Zone. So sometimes when we perform the uh, five finger D punch version, we would substitute one line for Astro Zone. Um, and, um, and I think we, we did the guitar arrangement pretty much the same as it appears in that version of the song. I love, I love, like musically, I love taking a rap song and turning it into a heavy hard rock song. 
Um, I thought that was a really cool choice musically. Um, and it just has such a great feel to it. It just it almost lends to the flow in a whole new way. Um, you know, because that's what I love so much about rap music is, is the flow of it um, and what you can do creatively uh, based on which kind of flow you want and, and, and doing it through a hard rock song, doing it through a guitar driven hard rock song. Just such a cool way to go for that cover. Perfect. It's a perfect way to go for that cover. Um, but, um, you know, we would have been just young sitting around talking about these business plans for an Astro Zone one day, and then we could have laser light shows there. Um, and, 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 and like, um, it, it's very cool that places like that ended up taking off. Like, like now lots of cities have places like that where kids can go and have an indoor gym. Um, I love watching those tours on YouTube when, when people go and, and like tour those places and try them out and do like vlogs, um, on those, um, AP would love seeing that if, if he were here today, like, yay, now those places exist so kids can go, go run wild at those places rather than, you know, get involved in the dangerous club scene. Um, you know, you know, they, they can have safer place. Like, I think that was his idea behind it. Like, cause we both like, w like we did, uh, when doves cry and, and part of the reason we did that song in the club and, um, and stuff is because of, of the line about, about, um, you know, your father and my mother, um, in, in that song, that, that was an inside thing between me and AP where, we were both out there in these wild lives in the club scene and trying to go to school at the same time, you know, work on charity projects and stuff at the same time and, and balance this hectic life. And, um, you know, what, what were our parents thinking where I think we both had reservations about each other's parents, like your parents must be just as bad as mine sort of thing. Um, And when we performed that song, um, that was part of the reason why was because we were supporting each other out there, even though our parents weren't really caring about us. And we felt kind of abandoned by our families and, and not treated right by our families. Um, so that's why that song was special to us. Um, and all of these other songs, you know, special little meanings like that too, where, where, um, you know, there's reasons, you know, why we may have performed it a certain way. Um, if we ever changed lyrics, um, added our own little, little touches and style, uh, when we did them was because we were such a tight group by then that we had all of our own little, you know, um, our own little quirky eccentricities and inside jokes and little traditions and, and Portland's big on traditions. Like when they, when they get a new tradition, they don't like to get rid of them, whether it's, whether it's everyone throwing their papers on the last day of school or, um, you know, um, the annual mayor's ball, you know, Port Portland's big on its traditions. Um, and the, the more motto of Portland is keep Portland weird. And boy, did we sure do that or, or what, um, you know, to think so much good art came out of that city too, um, is pretty cool. Uh, but boy, did we keep it weird. Um, <laughs> uh, anyhow, I hope you guys enjoyed this story time. So the next one. I've already given you some hints what that will be about. So stay tuned for that. I will link um, the uh, Growing Up in Rock and Roll playlist and the AP, the Me and AP's Life Story playlist um, in the description. Go check those out. There's a lot more stories behind songs like this if you like stories like that. Um, tried to keep this as, as PG as possible. Um, Oh boy. <laughs> um, 
you know, ho hopefully everyone can be mature about it all. Um, you know, keep in mind we were young, young and dumb back then, like, um, you know, kids sometimes <laughs> go a bit overboard, but boy, did, did we have fun doing, doing those songs back and forth, I think. Um, if I run across any others in that, uh, love songs back and forth, um, I'll, I'll do a follow up video. <laughs> Cause I, I'm like, I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm still running across songs that, that either I just hadn't thought about in a long time or sometimes stuff that I d didn't even know happened uh, and, and just now finding out about, um, they did this song or that song, what, what, um, but, uh, I'll link the songs from this discussion in the description. They're both amazing actually all three of them if you include house of the rising sun so we'll put all those down there um you know it's always good to support artists that that um have been that dedicated and and made those such big contributions to the world um and you know you know any of them that helped us to tell our story uh, our story of young love, um, even through the funny moments and the inside jokes and stuff, um, you know, thank you for that. Um, thank you for what you taught me musically. Thank you for inspiring me and what, what I did in life. Thank you for being good role models at times, you know, to, to all the bands that, that did you know, willingly help us. Um, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of songs out there that, that other kids did. Um, cause it wasn't just me and AP, you know? Um, and, and so the other thing I think we need to remember too is, is, you know, um, other people might've had other songs. Um, you know, we don't always let, let like, sometimes you don't even know how accurate um, like, like, is this, did the story even really happen like that, you know, or is somebody just making something up? Um, you know, but every once in a while I still run across uh, a new song. Um, this one today was one I already knew about. Um, not today, but in the last two or three days here, because it took me two or three days to get up the cojones to do this video but but this this most recent it was more of a rediscovery than than um one i hadn't known about um so yeah all right well hope you guys enjoyed